Today we are discussing a new reimagined spy comedy of Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Prime Video. Now the question is, is this remake good, great, or bad, and is it worth checking out? Well, we'll be discussing it all in today's spoiler breakdown, but first, let's get the conversation going in the comments below. Have you seen the 2005 film that this series is reimagining, and if you have seen it, were you a fan of that original film? Which leads me into this series. Were you excited for it, and once you've seen all 8 episodes, what did you like, love, or hate about it? Let's discuss it all in the comments below. Now with this dropping all at once and the final episode was over an hour long, I'll be breaking down the final episode and that cliffhanger of an ending, but we'll also be discussing the season as a whole with episode by episode commentary with my pros and cons and sharing my overall thoughts of the show and ultimately letting you all know if it's worth checking out. With that, time codes can be found in the description highlighting each topic. With all that out of the way, let's talk about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Now, episode 8, which was the final episode, was titled A Breakup. Now, after failing and quitting at their couple's therapy, but more importantly, failing at their third mission, by the end of episode 7, John tells Jane that he's done and he leaves their house. Now, the mid-credits of episode 7 show Jane receiving a new computer after breaking John's from a delivery low-risk member. As we open this finale with her waking up in preparation to start her day, as she opens her computer to find a new mission from Hey Hey, which is to terminate her Smith. Jane immediately closes her laptop in disbelief. I know the first thought going on in her mind is remembering the vow that John gave her that they would never kill each other, but she also knows if she doesn't comply, her life will be on the line. As she heads to her favorite bagel shop where her and John shared their first breakfast together, as she notices a happy couple together remembering the good times that her and John once had. As she prepares to feed Max, out of nowhere a bullet just misses her as the shots begin to fire in. We see Jane checking on Max and she notices blood dripping from the counter and her best friend Max is now dead. Now in her mind, I know she immediately thinks that this was probably John and yet again this is him breaking a vow which was to never harm Max as she's now out for blood. Now we cut over to seeing John with his mother as we learn that he's been staying with her since leaving Jane. Now as they arrive home, John sees the toilet seat up, which is a major red flag because during their therapy sessions with Jane, the one nice thing that she said about him was that he kept this toilet seat always down. As we see John sending his mom to run some errands, and for me, it was pretty clear that they're both being targeted at this point by their agency after failing their third mission. As John slowly observes the front door, he finds a trap wire at the front door that connects to a bomb. As he texts Jane that he wants to talk to her and she messages back that she's not too far from him and to me whatever love was there for them is being replaced with kill or be killed. As they meet at the Whitney Museum of American Art as John starts with the small talk but Jane wants to cut straight to the chase and she wants him to look her in her eyes. Now instead of addressing what they both just went through this moment shows how disconnected they are and how focused they are on the wrong things as she calls him the cruel man that she's ever met he fires back at her and questions if she actually slept with a neighbor but before it gets too nasty they decide to take things outside we watch both of them preparing to kill each other still under the assumption that they were the ones that were just trying to take each other out jane takes the first step ahead and makes the move and traps john in the revolving door and leaves him inside with a ticking bomb leaving him to think on a quick way to escape now we see the bomb actually does go off but john manages to escape and the chase to actually kill each other now begins as we see jane impersonating john pretending to be out of breath which i thought was hilarious as they fight in front of everyone and people are now intervening leaving both john and jane to fight off these people as we inevitably see them causing a major scare by causing chaos to avoid the police, we see John calls her and tells her how pretty she was when they first met in the elevator, and he questions if everything they've experienced was actually real, but Jane keeps her emotions at bay and tells him that this was all a part of her plan as that's all John needed to hear as the chase resumes. Now as John is getting closer to her, he gets hit by a taxi and we see Jane clearly showing some concern and even in the heat of the moment, she goes to kind of check on him and he's okay as the chase takes them back to their house. Now inside we see that John's mom is making tea and officially this is the first time that we see Jane meeting his mom, which her name is Denise, and she says that she's John's mom, AKA Michael. 
Now, Denise invites Jane to have a little bit of a talk over tea, and in this discussion, we find out that Michael relocated his mom a few months back. Now, Denise is here in her own accords, and she wants to let her know how her son feels about her. Now, while outside, Michael runs into the neighbor, played by Paul Dano, and he makes up this story about falling off the balcony and losing his keys, and he needs to cut through his house to re-enter. Back inside, Denise knows they're splitting up, but wants to let Jane know that Michael needs to know that she loves him. We hear about how he's so attached and how attached he can be, but he also needs to feel safe. But if not, he plays the role of whatever you want him to be, which to me explains his behavior towards Jane throughout this series. If she wanted to stay professional and didn't want to get into this romantic, intimate relationship, he was going to be okay with that. But she made the first move and kissed him at the end of episode two so he went along even though he wanted to kiss her earlier but again this is show that he allowed jane to take the lead again he played the role now jane is still holding her ground about not wanting to be with him as denise leaves with some last words of it being a shame that they couldn't make this thing work out they couldn't figure things out because it appears they had a beautiful life now back with michael and the neighbor we see michael exploring his belongings and prolonging this interaction by asking for a cup of water and ice now the neighbor talks about recently being divorced while michael makes his way downstairs to find that the neighbor has been spying on them since they first arrived now the neighbor played by paul dano his name is Harris and he is an agent but not a spy agent instead he's a real estate agent and he's been obsessed over this house which was pretty obvious based on the questions about it when we first saw him interacting with Jane now his passion is to sell this home you see Michael is relieved to know that him and Jane didn't sleep together and he's very apologetic towards Harris as they share a drink and Harris shares some advice with him about marriage not being alone and compromising in a relationship now Michael takes his advice, hops over the fence, and sneaks back into his house and turns on some music to distract Jane. As they both take shots at each other and we get the recreation of the major face-off scene back in the 2005 film. Now after shooting, punching, kicking, and choking one another, Michael manages to tie Jane up and he decides to inject both of them with the truth serum and the truth eventually comes out. Now we see the effects are hitting both of them pretty hard, but we also see the truth and the secrets coming out as Jane failed her CIA exam because of her sociopathic tendencies, which explains the marble jaw that we saw back in episode two. Now Jane also reveals the reason why she no longer talks to her father and it now being Michael's turn, he reveals that he was kicked out of Marines early because of his asthma and he kind of felt less than after that happened. As the topic of their insecurities come up about sleeping with the targets and their sadness and Jane's mother's death, Michael not paying his debts to his grandmother by not having kids, just two people who kept these things buried finally getting the chance to be truthful. Now they go a step further and they admit that they miss shots at each other, but just when things are starting to go right, in come the other John and Jane that we met in episode 4 and they're here to kill them. We finally learn what it means to be a high risk agent as this John and Jane are finalizers. They kill other Smiths. They kill Smiths that try to leave the program. We also find out that they've been tracking them since the very beginning and they talk about their supervisor who they view as a god. Now I love this moment here because it's a great callback to the joke of John sneezing three times which created a perfect opportunity for them to get away from them as John is shot in the eye leaving Jane and our John to run upstairs to their escape room but unfortunately Michael was shot and they only have one bullet left to defend themselves. Bringing it back to the core issue in their relationship for the first time since the start Jane wants Michael to come up with a plan and take the lead as he suggested they wait till the lights go off so they can use that to their advantage. Now we see Michael is unfortunately slowly dying by the loss of blood and having kids we know is a big part of where their relationship start to turn wrong but with their lives now on the line and their odds of surviving is pretty low we see Jane finally being honest and talking about actually having kids as she kind of jokingly says that she'll compromise and have one he really wants five but then end up saying let's have two kids together and let's live in the mountains a very sad and sentimental moment between these two characters as we finally get the reveal of Jane's real name which is Alana and we get this nice joke between two characters actually liking their code names instead. As Jane sees that he's getting closer to dying she changes the plan and wants to take her chances with the one bullet against the other Jane on the other side of the door and save her John or Michael and save the relationship and their future together. 
As she opens the door, we see three shots being fired from the outside of the house, and that's the end of episode eight. Now we cut to finding Harris coming over with Jane's favorite book in hand, and he sees the destruction. He calls someone in excitement, thinking that this is his chance to finally sell this house, as he calls it his Moby D. Now, the big question that immediately comes to mind did John and Jane or Alana and Michael, did they live or did they die? Now, if we take a look at the scene, we saw three shots being fired, but remembering that Alana or Jane said that she only had one bullet left. So to me, I believe both Alana and Michael did ultimately die, but who's to say that she may have shot the other Jane, that's where the one bullet comes in, then Jane shot back at her, that's the second bullet, and maybe Alana wasn't hit by the shot, she took Jane's gun and finished her off, and that explains the third and final shot. Which opens up the back half of this video, which is what are the chances of a continuation, aka a season two? Now, I've seen a handful of interviews with the actors promoting this show, but the question of a season two was really never brought up, and listening to how Donald Glover's discussed the show, to me, it sounded more like this was a one and done series to take the idea of the original movie, but really examine the relationships first while also being spies versus the film having obviously the opposite of already being in an established relationship and them re-falling in love with each other and taking out the agency that tried to kill them. Listen, even though I feel like this could be a one and done series, if this series breaks records as the most streamed series on Prime Video, they might do a season two. And I wouldn't be opposed to seeing if they survive the continuation of them, obviously, maybe having kids, rebuilding their relationship, taking out the agency who's probably going to be hunting them, or if they decide to do like an anthology series and we meet a new John and Jane. So let me know, number one, do you feel like they survived the end of this series? And if so, what would a life look like for them? And number two, would you like to see a season two with our same characters or an anthology series like I pitched? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. But as far as the final episodes go, I thought that this was a nice way to reverse engineer this very interesting situation that our characters found themselves in. As spies having to work together on missions while also falling in and out and back in love again, I thought this had some of the best choreographed fights because if I'm being honest, I thought that some of the fights weren't the best in the entire series, but this fight had actual meaning. But as far as the cliffhanger goes, open-ended cliffhanger endings aren't really my thing, but I do like how they handle it because dead or alive, at the end of the day, they did actually care and truly love each other at the end, which was the actual destination and the focus of this entire series. Two different people from two different walks of life living and finding themselves in this life of spies and lies and ultimately finding love at the end of the day. So to me, it was a good finale, not a great finale, but overall a solid way to end this series. But let's speak about the entire series, highlighting each episode, my pros and my cons, which episode episodes were my favorite and my overall thoughts and experience of this entire show. Now, I want to start off by saying I've seen the original movie once when it first came out, and I thought the movie was fine. It was a fine action spy film, but I never really revisited it. I'm not like a diehard fan of the original, so I'll say that to say this. I would prefer watching this series or like an episode of this series before I would even watch the movie again because I personally like the show more than I like the movie. Let's actually talk about these episodes and talking about episode one, which was titled First Date. Right off the bat, I'm giving this a nine out of 10. I love that. I mean, I love this premiere episode, y'all, because to open up with the guest stars, Isa Gonzalez and Alexander Skarsgård, to me, was genius. Because the way I look at it, if they were to make this into a actual film and able to remake the 2005 version, you can already see the Hollywood execs picking these two very talented, but also highly regarded, beautiful people being the new 2024 Brad and Angelina, and to kill them off in the opening sequence, that told me everything I needed to know about this being its own thing and having two actors who some may not pick to be in a spy thriller big world traveling story. And I just love the awkwardness of the characters first meeting and seeing their first mission ending with that house blowing up which was an homage to the film. It was just a great way to start off this show. Now jumping into 
my thoughts of episode two, which was titled Second Date. Now, I'm going to give this episode a six out of 10. Coming off that great first episode, it just wasn't that good of a follow up. I felt the lack of excitement and energy from that opening episode. But as far as the positives go, I love John Turturro and seeing him being this weird billionaire and the whole kind of shining scene of him having them act like dogs, but then them accidentally killing him and then having to get rid of the body and failing the mission, all that stuff I liked. But again, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first episode, which leads into episode three, which was titled First Vacation. And this to me, I'm given a 6.5 out of 10. I liked it a little bit more than episode two, but this is the episode where you start to see more of the scale of the show while being on these missions, but also the missions involving another couple. This is where the show starts to incorporate each mission being a look into their relationship. Them observing this couple whose marriage seems to be coming at the end and seeing John and Jane see maybe a future version of themselves. And we get to see the cracks in the relationship. John kind of going rogue. We also got some decent laughs in this one. But again, like episode two, it just wasn't as exciting as the beginning of the show. But again, a solid episode overall. Now we're getting to the fun territory. Going back to that episode one, and we're talking about episode four, which was titled Double Date. Now, this is easily one of my favorite episodes. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. Love the idea of going on a double date with another Smith. This shows how different this was from the film and really exploring how this is more of a rom-com than a straightforward spy adventure story. I thought the funny and awkward moments between the high-risk Jane and John played extremely well by Parker, Posey, and Wagner Mara. They were incredible in this show to me and them sending our John and Jane on their mission was just like comedy gold. I love this episode from start to finish. The running joke of the ex-girlfriend Miss in the hand and showing the jealousy on Jane just works so well for me in this episode. Now moving on to my thoughts on episode five, which was titled, Do You Want Kids? I'm going to give this a seven out of 10. For me, seeing Ron Perlman playing an adult version of what it would look like if they had kids and being spies was a really fun type of idea of this episode. But again, we get to see the traditional spy global scale of them going, I believe it was Italy, and then just seeing the disconnect of John buying the house without letting Jane know about it, but then also him wanting kids kids and Jane not really wanting kids and also she wants to maybe be a high risk agent so we're starting to see the riff in their relationships and starting to see the major issues taking place in their relationship. Now I'll admit overall I enjoyed the episode but in particularly in this episode and this kind of speaks to my thoughts on the action in the show I thought it was just okay. I wish the action had a little bit more style so that's kind of my criticism not only in this episode but overall besides like the final fight sequence between John and Jane I thought the action was just okay in the series. Now we get down to episode six, which was titled Couples Therapy. Episode six was my personal favorite. This is a 10 out of 10. This is perfectly balanced with comedy and drama. I thought this was top tier acting from both leads, especially when we saw them at the campfire and when they had that fight. You can't tell me that didn't feel real. If you've ever been in a loving, long relationship, that was a couple having a fight. It was just so real and authentic. Shelter I made. Oh, I made this fire. Oh, I got you this I fish. Shelter, food, fire, water. The switching between seeing them in the therapy sessions while also seeing them on the missions and how their relationships kind of bled into the missions, kind of going good or bad. But also we saw that they failed their second mission in this episode and Jane getting favored by their superior and having that idea of moving up to high risk and how their relationship started to get in a really bad spot and how, again, that affected their work. But... The icing on top, if you don't know this about me, I'm a huge Sarah Paulson fan. Shout out to my back when American Horror Story was peak television, and she's also great in everything else I've seen her in. I'm a big Sarah Paulson fan. She was, to me, the best guest star of the show, and her performance was excellent. Moments of her and her son was just hilarious, working from home, and speaking of the home, the end with them setting her home on fire was just so goddamn funny to me. One of my favorite episodes of TV I've seen in a very long time. This episode, to me, truly captured the essence of what the show was going for. I followed it up with episode 7, which was titled Infidelity. I thought that was a great follow-up. Another favorite episode of mine. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. This really being the breaking point in their relationship. Them, after not 
completing and not wanting to work with the couples therapy, but then also them failing their third mission in this episode. Now, I personally thought all the guest spots were great, and I mentioned how much I love Sarah Paulson, but followed up by Sarah Paulson, I love the presence of Michaela Cole. She was amazing in this episode, seeing her taking out both of our agents, but also showing off her comedic chops and going back and forth with Jane. This, to me, was just a good episode overall and a really good lead up to the finale, which I've already discussed. So to highlight my favorite episodes, go over it again. Episode six was just perfect to me. Loved episode one, had fun with episode four. I really thought episode seven was really great. So those are my favorite episodes. And I also want to give a quick shout out. Amy Simetz, who directed episode six and seven. I think she's a fantastic director. She's worked with Donald Glover before because she's actually directed episodes of Atlanta. So I thought that she probably was my favorite director in this entire series. So wrapping up this entire video with my final thoughts, first off, I want to start off by talking about the creators of the show, Francisca Sloan and of course the great Donald Glover. Now they also worked together on Atlanta and they were the co-creators of this show. She to me and Donald Glover and all the writers and directors did a really good job of making this their own thing. Reshaping the action world of spies and really focusing on the relationship really worked for me and I thought that the writing in the show was really sharp and really detailed. I also want to give props to the music in this show. Like anything Donald Glover touches always has a great soundtrack, but also the person that composed the main score. It reminded me so much of like a David Fincher, Trent Reznor, and Atticus Ross score. Like I love the score in this show. But now it's time to talk about the two leads. And I want to start off by talking about Donald Glover first. If you've been a part of my channel for a long time, you know I've covered Atlanta and how special that show means to me and how talented I know he is and how he's just such a just great genius individual. I think he showcased all the things that makes him a leading guy in Hollywood. He's extremely funny. He has swag. He has charm. He has charisma out of the ass as he plays this character who has his insecurities and was flawed. But honestly, it reminded me a little bit of myself at points. But I love that he never left his mom behind and how he was really supportive of Jane at points throughout the show. And it made it, you know, they had their ups and downs in relationship. But overall, man, I thought Donald Glover gave a great performance across the board. Now, this is my first time experiencing Maya Erskine, and I've seen clips of her on that show, Pen15, which I've the clips I've seen is hilarious, and I, I've yet to see an entire episode, but I plan to, especially after watching this show. I can now officially say I'm a big fan. <laughs> I thought her comedic timing was flawless in the show. Like she had some of my favorite comedic moments in the show, whether it's her awkward moments in the bathroom, like in episode two, the argument she would have with John. Like she is just perfect. I love love her performance and like there are just moments in the show where I'm, I'll be honest I didn't like the character she was annoying she was so closed off and just got on my nerves a lot throughout the series but that's a credit to her performance. She gave you sexy. She gave you being a badass, being intelligent, going bar for bar with the genius Donald Glover. I was just taken back by how talented she is. She is just a crazy talented individual and I thought that she was the MVP of this entire show. Now I had my issues with the show as I mentioned. I didn't really like episodes two and three and there were some pacing issues in the middle part of the show and not all the missions were that exciting and speaking of the excitement of it all, as far as the spy action moments felt they were a little bit underwhelming at points like I appreciated how grounded it felt that they weren't like experts at martial arts or gun fu or whatnot but I wish that the action had just a little bit more flair and a little bit more style so while I enjoyed the romantic element of the show I thought the more spy action beats contained some of the weakest elements of this entire show now to wrap it all up this show was ultimately about a relationship and being relatable to those that have experienced being in a relationship in which you found someone in which you thought you loved. Now John and Jane had the opportunity to become super spies but at the end of the day they're just regular people who had to put on these stylish clothes to find themselves on these international huge action set pieces but during all that John and Jane have to find the most important part of what makes this a real connection. I really enjoy watching this arranged marriage become something real and authentic seeing them saying their first I love you's to dealing with in-laws to dealing with personal personal space and having each other backs and learning each other's habits, discovering each other's sexual preferences, having their big conversations about 
kids, experiencing jealousy, and ultimately seeing what I know sometimes I've done in the past with a long-term relationship that's using your partner's deepest vulnerabilities as a weapon during arguments. Now, this show had all the elements you've come to see in a James Bond film meets the things I love about a good rom-com, which made watching Mr. and Mrs. Smith an experience that I will remember and ultimately say it was a pleasure watching and comes as a highlight recommended show to watch from me. So there you have it, a full breakdown of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is available to stream on Prime Video. If you watch this entire video, number one, thank you so much. Do me a favor, for I can give you a special thank you in the comments by putting in the comments right now, hashtag Michael and Alana. Make sure to share all your thoughts on each episode, how you felt about the ending, and of course your favorite episode, your favorite guest role, what worked, what didn't work. Should there be a season two? Let's talk about it all in the comments below you all are awesome hope you all are staying safe and i'll catch you all on the next video